Good morning, good morning, everybody. We're going to have a little devotion here this morning. Uh, take up a little, not going to take up a lot of time, but just going to talk about something here this morning that has been on my heart for actually seven years. Um, seven years ago, um, when we just moved to the Ozarks, we were living in a camper, and I heard God tell me, in seven years, you will have rest. Um, I've said that to my wife for years now. I, before we even had a house here, we were living in a camper. I didn't even know what that meant, but I know God spoke it to me. So this coming Passover has been seven years. We first celebrated, when we purchased this land, we celebrated Passover. We cleared out a spot on this land and we made a fire and we were covered in ticks we just rented a car drove down here and built a little fire cleared out a little area some lawn chairs and had lamb roasted over a fire we even came back the next day had breakfast um very interesting um that it started here for us on Passover. God always reveals to us prophetically timing. And God's feast days are holy, guys. And we got to remember that His times and His seasons never change. Um, he always has moved on His seasons and times, um, especially when it comes to fulfillment of prophecy. You know that Christ was uh, crucified on Passover. He was resurrected, you know, the first fruits, and then seven weeks later, the Feast of Weeks was Shavuot or Pentecost. Then you have the fruit harvest, which is in the fall, and that is the Feast of Sukkot, which is the Feast of Trumpets. It's several um, holidays into one, and the fruit harvest is what we are waiting on. The Feast of Trumpets, I do believe, but that's when the Christ will return. Um, no man knows the day nor the hour because, I mean, even the moon is has to be sighted during the Feast of Trumpets. But anyways, that's a whole other story. But God moves on his calendar, and that is the fruit harvest that is next, that it has not been fulfilled yet. So you want to pay attention to God's calendar, his seasons, his times. Um, they have not changed, and, he, and they are a shadow. He says these feast days are a shadow. They were pointing to something. So that is what has happened. And we are waiting for the fall fruit harvest to come to pass. Now, God has always moved on his calendar. And if you remember back during 2014, 15, there was blood moons in the sky. He had a blood moon on Passover and then Sukkot. And then a solar eclipse everybody had their glasses out remember and all this stuff and then the following year it was Passover and Sukkot twice God was confirming this is the beginning and this is the end um, I'm the first I'm the last and so um, it's coming full circle you know so we need to watch the feast days God moves on the feast days be paying attention to them Passover is one of my favorite holidays um, it's scriptural and it's just amazing to celebrate as you start getting into the understanding of it. So we, long story short, we, we celebrated Passover here. Um, before we even did anything with the land, we just came on a rental car, cleaned out the land, celebrated Passover. And, you know, then we moved down here in the camper. And when I was in the camper, God told me that we'll have rest in seven years. I didn't quite know what that meant, but I have told my wife that for years and everybody I said, I've heard that, I've heard that, I've heard that. So here we are, this coming Passover is the seventh year. So very interesting. So I keep opening up my Bible the last few days randomly to the same spot, which I'm sure you guys have had that happen before. Usually I just start reading and I, I just for some reason haven't so it even happened again this morning I opened to the same spot and I'm like well I might as well start reading so as I start reading um, it's 2nd Chronicles 14 
and 15. And it's the story of King Aza. Aza, Aza. So, however you want to say it. What's interesting about this story is he was a man that was after God's heart. He was from the line of David. Um, um, the prophet Azariah, the son of Odin, um, the Spirit of God came upon a prophet and came to the king Asa. And Second Chronicles 15, let's, let's go to 2 or 3. 2, the Lord, he said, the Lord is with you. While you're with him, if you seek him, you'll be fa he'll be found by you. If you seek him, he'll be found by you. So, um, but if you forsake him, he will forsake you. Ouch. Now, this is, a, this is interesting. Now, for a long time, Israel has been without, a, without the true God, without the, te with, without the teaching and priest, and without law. But when the trouble... They turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and he sought, and sought him, and he was found by them. So, in times of trouble, the church or Israel always got into a position where they seek God's face. And that is what I've been saying about the tribulation for a while, guys. A tribulation, it will cause, times of trouble will cause you to seek. It will cause you to seek out, you know, so... It's it's coming, and it, you can't always look at trouble in a bad way, but because it does cause you to seek God's face. Now it's better to do it now before trouble arises, obviously. But this prophet came out and spoke this to King Asa and says, you know, in in those times there was no in in, in, in those times there was no peace, and the one who went out there was no one came, nor the one that came in. The great turmoil was all, all the inhabitants of the land. So nation was destroyed by nation and city by city, and God troubled them with every adversary. Now, but you be strong and do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Your work shall be rewarded. That's what he was telling the king Asa. Now, when he heard these words, the prophecy of Oded, Asa heard these words, and the prophecy of Oded, and the prophecy, and the prophet. He took courage and removed the abominable isles from the land, Judah and Benjamin, and the cities which had been taken on the mountains of Ephraim. He restored the altar of the Lord that was uh, before the vestibule of, of the Lord. Um, then he, verse 12, Then he entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of the fathers with all their heart and all their soul. So he heard the word of God, and he removed, once again, like Josiah, he removed the idols, he removed the high places he moved the abominations and um, it says and they took an oath verse 14 they took an oath before the Lord with a, with a loud voice shouting with trumpets and ram horns and Judah rejoiced at that oath that they swore with all their heart and sought him with all their soul and he was found by them and the Lord gave them rest from all around wow and he removed Micah and the mother Aza the king. He removed his own grandmother for having an Asher a pole. And it says in verse 16, he removed Micah, the mother of Aza, his grandmother, uh, or his mother. He removed Micah, the mother of Aza, the king, from being a, a queen mother because she made an obscene image of Asra. And as it cut down her, he cut down that pole and crushed it and burned it by the brook of Kidron. So, very, very interesting story. So he even removed his um, um, stuff from his own grandmother. Now, at the beginning of 14, it explains about King Asa. Now, it says, He did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord God. He removed the altars of foreign gods and high places. Now, I love it when I hear that in the Bible. I mean, guys, we need to remove the high places. So, King Asa was solid, rock solid, okay? And he broke down the sacred pillars and cut down the wooden images, and he commanded Judah to seek the Lord of their fathers to observe the law and the commandments, okay? He removed the high places and increased incense altars from the city of Judah, and the kingdom was quiet under him. And he built fortified cities, and here's the key thing that I kept opening up to, and we're entering into the seventh year, 
that God told me in seven years you'll have rest. And then I keep opening my Bible to this the last few days. I'm like, this is God. This is and when I started reading, I was like, oh my God, the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit is trying to tell me something. So obviously, and he said, and he built fortified city in Judah, Judah, for the land had rest. He had no war in those years because the Lord had given him rest. Therefore, he said to Judah, let's build these cities and walls around them and towers and gates while the land is yet before us because we have sought the Lord our God. Because we have sought. It says we sought him. We have sought him. Second Chronicles chapter 14. Um, let's see what verse we are in. Six. Seven. Seven. And we have sought him, and he has given us rest on every side. So they built and they prospered. And they ended up going, ended up going to war against um, it says, you know, Asa went out, they ended up going to war against the Ethiopian army, which was a million some army. And he cried out to God and he said, God, nothing is too hard for help for you, hard for you. Verse eleven. Um, whether with many or whether with few, you know. He said, Lord, it is nothing for you to help, whether with many or with those who have no power. Help us, O Lord God, we, for we rest on you in your name. We go against this multitude, O Lord, and you are our God, and do not let man prevail against you. So they were going up against a multitude. The remnant today is against a multitude, okay? We are small in number. We um, need God and we have to seek his face guys so the Lord will give you rest God will give us rest from our enemies roundabout if we do what we seek him with our whole heart right now and so that is the key that's why God said in seven years you'll have rest because we seek him with our whole heart that's why the prophet came and says if you seek him he'll be found by you and then let's go to um, 16 2 Chronicles 16, this is amazing, verse 8, it says, Were the Ethiopians and Luvium not a huge army and very many chariots and horsemen? Then it says, Yet because you relied, we're talking about the Ethiopian being a very large army, but God destroyed them and they prevailed. They, had, they were smaller in number and they won, but God was with them and they gave them rest from their enemies. So how do you get rest from your enemies? It is this right very thing right here. Now, yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hands. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Interesting. His eyes are searching to and fro, looking throughout the earth, whose heart is loyal to him, who will rely on him. And those that are removing the altars of Baal, those that are removing the altars in their lives and the all falsehoods and all this stuff and seeking God with their whole heart. God says, hey, I will I will be with you. And when armies come against you, I will, you know, I will, you rely on me. I'm with you. So I will give you rest. From your enemies I will give you rest and there will be no war amongst you because you sought my face you seek me and I, that's what I heard seven years ago and it's weird because I'm coming to that seven year and God starts giving me revelation on this and I think it's just amazing because um, we need to stay in rest because we rest in the Messiah we rest in him and he rely on him and we seek his face it says they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and all their soul verse 12 chapter 15 verse 12 2nd Chronicles they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord their God and their fathers with all their heart and all their soul it's amazing yet because you relied on the Lord and he delivered them into your hand for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. Wow. And and um, 
and he said it didn't kind of like finish strong he had a few issues at the end but guys it's just the message in general of what's going on obviously um it says even in second chronicles 14 when they went against the ethiopians it says so the ethiopians were overthrown because god was with asa and they could not recover they could not recover for they were broken before the lord and his army and they carried away very much spoil then the defeated cities around Giar, for the fear of the lord came upon them the fear of the lord came upon them because they knew that god was with king asa and his army what happened now for the fear of the lord came upon him and they plundered all the cities for there was extreme ex exceedingly much spoil in them so they took the spoil too so quick message today quick devotion and king aza read it for yourself guys it's just an amazing story if you want to enter into god's rest enter in through the gate that's narrow enter in because just like just like the prophet Oded. check this out just like the prophet that came and said you will be rewarded if you seek him you'll be found by you but if you forsake him he will forsake you for it's a long time since Israel been without a true God without a teaching a priest and without a law and in those times there was no peace but the one that went out came in but great turmoil was on the inhabitants of the land everywhere this was before they entered into rest um, verse 7 um, but right before that it says God troubled them with every adversary. That's what it's like to not be in rest. You're troubled on every side. You, you're, you're, there's chaos going on all the time. And, you know, you're always fighting a battle. And, you know, it's just constant war, you know. And so rest is like entering in. Entering into the spirit. Entering in and being rewarded. I keep hearing that word lately. Entering in. You cannot enter in without faith you know you cannot enter in the spirit with doubt you cannot enter in the spirit with unbelief to enter in you got to have faith and you got to rely on the lord god host of heaven his army and his host and who he is you got to rely on him completely wholeheartedly and then he will give you rest from your enemies round about round about he will give you rest for your souls and for your for you your family and your 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 tribe okay so <clears throat> verse 7 but you be strong and do not let your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded that's what he said so you seeking him with all your heart all your mind all your soul and you completely relying on them and enter into that covenant of seeking the god of israel the god of jacob the god of abram isaac and jacob yeshua the only brought forth only son from god jesus christ from nazareth seeking his face his covenant everything in the scriptures seeking him with your whole heart then you will be rewarded and you will have rest from your enemies round about. Entering in to a promise, a covenant is what you're doing. And when you do so, God brings rest from your enemies. Rest. He will, it's, it's, it's something that he told me was coming and now I'm reading about it right now. I just think it's very, very interesting. I was like, wow. I don't know about you, but it's nice to not be in all these spiritual wars and battles and, you know, and turmoil. It's nice to rest. Like the Sabbath, you rest, you know, like to, to rest in God. God rested on the seventh day when he created the creation, you know. And, and Sabbath day is for man, not made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So, you know, rest is a good thing. Rest, you'll find rest for your souls, you know. And so, like Hebrews 4 enter into that rest um he also rested now we rest but rest is deep we need rest and god will give it to you if you seek him with your whole heart 
mind, soul, spirit, body, seeking him in everything, asking him, letting him be the head of what your decisions are, your head of your life, the head of your reasoning, the head of what you think, that every decision you make, you seek God on. Everything that's happening, you ask for discernment. I mean, you're constantly letting him be your shepherd. And a shepherd leads the sheep, and you're constantly relying on him to feed and water you. And so your decisions are made by him. So you look to him for your decision making. You look for him with your whole heart, your whole being. And you follow that shepherd to the fresh grass. And he'll make you lie it down in grass that is green. And he feeds you. And he nourishes you. And he waters you. And then you become a sheep of the shepherd. And you become sheep of thy pasture, of the God's fields, and you just let the shepherd have his way. And he knows what he's doing. He is a good shepherd, and he knows his sheep, and his sheep follow him. His sheep know him and hear his voice, and we follow him. Just like in Revelation 14, the remnant, they follow the lamb wherever he goeth. You know, there's no there's no deceit found in their mouth. There's no falsehood found in them. They were blameless before the throne of God. And the remnant is that way. That, you know, we are the remnant who seek the Lord God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Even though you might fail, even though you might not be perfect, even though you might have days of doubt and have days of confusion, you don't give up. You continually seek. You continually, you will find. If you knock, the door will be opened. And that is exactly what happened here. He kept seeking God. He relied on the Lord God. He even removed his mother's, grandmother's mother's Asherah pole and burnt it to the ground because he had conviction. He had the fear of the Lord. It said the fear of the Lord rested on all. When he did, when had the fear of the Lord, it rested on all around him. This power, when you seek the Lord God of the heavens, he will have your back. He will stand by your side. You will not walk alone in this, okay? You will stand with him. You will walk with him. You will enter in this covenant with him. And you will not be, you will not regret it. You will not regret it. And just like he said, be strong and do not let your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded. That's what the prophet told him. Yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered you into their hand for the eyes of the Lord. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth to show himself strong on, the, on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. He will show himself strong on behalf of whose hearts are loyal to him. Guys, let loyalty and let, let, let loyalty and feed run into your life with him be loyal to him and obedient and seek his face not because you have to but because you want to the tribulation or because you have to now is because you want to God seek his face so that you can enter into rest that you can enter into rest and let him be your front guard your strong tower who you run to like David said you'll run to him and he'll protect you in these times and under the shadow of thy wings, you shall abide. A thousand may fall. Ten thousand may fall my right. A thousand may fall, but I shall abide under the shadow of the wings of the Almighty. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. He leads me to water. He leads me to good things. This good shepherd knows what's good for you. He's a good shepherd, and he knows what's good for you. He will not lead you to a wolf. He will not lead you to a, to a place where there's no grass. He wants to lead you to where there's food for your soul, food for your spirit, food for you, that you may flourish and that you may have rest for your souls. Remember, he said, come to me, all you who are weary heavy laden and I shall give you rest for your souls let us enter into that rest guys that we may have rest for our souls that we may enter in to the kingdom to where he is a shepherd to us and we are his sheep and we follow the lamb we follow the shepherd wherever he goes when we hear his voice 
and we respond. He said, my sheep will know my voice, and they follow me, and he is the gate, and the sheep enter by that gate. Guys, shalom, and may we enter into the rest, and read Second Chronicles. Read Second Chronicles um, 14, 15, and 16, some of 16, and 16. Very interesting story. I think you will find it amazing. I think that you will, you will really enjoy it and let us enter into God's rest. Because, and how do we enter into that rest? Enter into the covenant and seek his face with your whole heart, your whole being, your whole mind, and let him shepherd us. Not the world, not man's doctrine, not man's traditions, not man's religion, but let the sheep shepherd shepherd us that we might be led to clean water and good pastures and good food that our life may be restored and we may we may have rest from our enemies round about and watch what he does he's going to do amazing thing in your life when you submit to him and you rely on him wholeheartedly every decision everything that you do every time you wake up every time you go to sleep you let him be the lord of your life the lord the captain the captain the master of your life and you will find out that he will fight your battles for you every time israel was getting destroyed it's because they were turned away to other idols and false gods but when they stood on the rock with him they cried out to him god delivered them and even like Asa, he was facing a million man army and god just help fight them and destroy them and they took the spoil they took the booty they took massive amounts of it they shouldn't have won they won because he was with them today you do not want to go in but to battle without him you will lose you will lose this battle if you do not seek his face day and night night and day and let him be the king over your life knock on that door seek him out and enter into this covenant and you will be rewarded for your efforts not that you're doing it for reward you're doing it because you love him and you want to enter into the covenant and do what was right just like at the beginning king Asa said and he did what was good and right in the eyes of the lord his god and removed the altars what altars are you removing quick question where are the altars you're removing? Because I can tell you this, there are, they are everywhere. They are everywhere right now. And if you're not removing altars in this hour, you're, you're submitting to some false altar. Because there are fall, there is all fall, altars everywhere. Altars of Baal. There's traps everywhere. There's we're living in the darkest hour almost a mankind has ever seen. It says. Worse than the days of Noah, guys. This is getting a very bad. It says it will be worse than no other time on earth when this begins. Jacob's trouble. So we must enter into the covenant. Seek his face. With all of our heart. With all of our soul. With all of our being. And be loyal. And let's rely on him. And watch what he does. Watch him fight the battle for you. Because he wants to. He's our God. He's our King. We, we, we trust in him. In whom I put my trust. When David went to fight Goliath. Was it scary? Nobody could beat Goliath. But a little shepherd boy walks up and grabs a few rocks and slings the giant to the ground. Who are you, O Philistine? Great Philistine. Who are you to defile our God? Who are you? And the shepherd boy, being prepared, the little shepherd boy, slung the rock and knocked the giant dead. Out of a small company, a small remnant, who didn't look great in stature, who had small in number, but God of Israel was with him. And he slayed the giant and took his head and sword. Now guys, this is... This is exactly how God moves. This is exactly what God is trying to show us. That we need to stay humble, meek, lowly, and put our trust in him like little shepherd boy David did. Who are you to defile the armies of Israel? Who are you? 
Who are you to stand against God? And God says, whom, whom should, why shall I be afraid? God told me that one time about all the armies and demons. He said, well, who, why shall I be afraid? Nothing can stand against you when God is on your side. Nothing. There is more for us than there is against us. And the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the L of L, and the Prince of Peace, He is with us. Nothing. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, it says, they took counsel and they came against us, but the words came to not. Because El is with us. Elohim is with us. You can take counsel, you can speak your words, but they come to not. The witches can speak the words, they come to not. Because they go back on their own heads. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you, you need to be praying. You need to be seeking God's face. You need to be praying those kind of prayers. The enemy... The very trap that they lay, David said, they themselves will be caught in it. I mean, these are the prayers you can pray. You can pray in the spiritual ramp, get into the war. Because I can tell you this, the dark side is in the war. So in the front lines, you better be praying. My house is what we call a house of prayer. We got to be praying, seeking God's face, praying, seeking God's face, praying in the spirit. Building up yourself in your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. If you're not praying in the Holy Ghost. You need to get submerged in the Holy Spirit. Be baptized in the Holy Ghost. That you may speak in new tongues. That you may have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And above all, earnestly seek to prophesy and walk in love. Above all. It's a very, very, very powerful thing to speak the mysteries of God. So guys, there's so much that we can do. There's so much that we can seek. It says, knock and it shall be open. Seek and you will find. The shepherd is good, and he will lead you to great green pastures. Love you guys. Shalom. And read this. Think about it. Think about entering in and let, letting him give us rest. Shalom. Have a great one.